December 30th, 1988, 18-year-old Jack Dale Walker has a co-worker drive him to the home of Juanita Epperson. Walker was going to talk to his estranged girlfriend, Shelly Epperson, who was staying with her grandmother. Walker went there with the intention to threaten suicide if she and their th three-month-old baby did not leave with him. After a short argument, Walker grew angry and attacked Ellison with a hunting knife. Her uncle, Donald Epperson, came out of a bedroom to help her and began fighting with Walker. Ellison managed to dial 911 at some point during the attack. I need help, she told the dispatcher. He's stabbing me. I'm dead. Please. When police arrived, Ellison was dead. She had been stabbed 32 times, including several times with an ice pick Walker had acquired from the kitchen. Donald Epperson suffered 11 stab wounds. Although Epperson was conscious when police arrived at the home, he later died from his wounds. Ellison's grandmother, Juanita Epperson, also wounded in the attack. She suffered a broken arm, a stab wound after trying to stop Walker by hitting him with a pipe wrench. When police arrived, they found Walker laying on the front porch in a pool of blood. He had apparently cut his own wrists. He was arrested at the scene. Now Jack Dale Walker was born March 10th 1966, the same year that I was born. And the reason I'm doing this video is because there are other facts that probably need to be mentioned that, are, that happen way too often today. Now I know I went to school the entire junior high, back then junior high I believe was 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. Uh, it's, it's been 40, <laughs> 45 years for me. Uh, Jack was very quiet. He just, he would sit at his desk, he wouldn't say much. I don't believe he ever got in trouble that I can remember. He was always well-dressed. He'd always wear an Izod type shirt. Um, he was, you know, clean cut. And I believe he actually got fairly good grades. But there was a side to Jack that nobody knew. Uh, you never saw Jack outside of school you know we would go to the bowling alley we would go to the shopping centers and you never ran into him because once they got home him and his older brother they were either inside or they were out in their own yard with no friends and he was not the kind of person that you would invite to a party or it. there was just something everybody knew that was strange about him his he didn't really have a sense of humor he would smirk at you, the same smirk that is in the picture that you just saw. But you just, you just there was just something about him that wasn't right. And I think everybody that uh, went to school with him felt that. But we just couldn't put the finger on it. But later in his testimony in this case, everything came out. He had an abusive childhood, a broken family him and his brother. His brother had quite the lengthy record. Nobody in the family today is alive. The mother, the father, the brother, they're all gone. And of course, Jack was executed. He was not a, you know, like I said, he was not a, a bad kid, but he just, you know, not a very social kid. I don't remember him participating in any sports, and I believe they were they had some uh, religious beliefs that he was not allowed to do, do to do certain things. And I don't recall what that was. It did notice uh, when I was reading the case files that he had claimed he was a Jehovah's Witness, whether he was then or not. I know I did grow up with a few kids that, you know, they didn't have televisions. They weren't allowed to do most anything that we did. Uh, but certainly, I don't know if that even had a factor. I do know Later on, drugs and alcohol uh, played a big factor, but Jack had other hidden problems. He had some severe psychotic uh, problems, and he had actually sought treatment for those things before the murders took place, and he was denied because of lack of insurance. 
And man, I think that is a big part of the mental crisis we have going on in our country today. People that actually want help, they can't get it. They're not allowed to get it because they don't have the proper insurance because everything has to come with a dollar bill. And I'll never forget this. Now, I was not in Oklahoma when this took place. I had just left, or I certainly probably would have heard of it. But I didn't discover it, and probably until 2010, I didn't know anything about the case. But I do remember about 2007, I was living in Oklahoma, and I took a trip up to Minneapolis. I had uh, a big storage unit of my furniture and belongings. And I went up to retrieve a truckload of that, and I came across a yearbook. And I was thumbing through that, and I came across where Jack had signed my yearbook. And it wasn't like the other students did it. He flipped the yearbook upside down, and this is what he wrote, and I will never forget it because I, I sat there for a minute and looked at that. See you in the next life, your friend Jack. I thought, man, what is that supposed to mean? You know, does, is he talking about maybe the next grade? Nobody else would sign something like that. But it, then I thought, well, that's Jack. He was strange. And then I also noticed how good his handwriting was. I mean, guys did not write like that. So that's, I knew he was a good student. To be clear, I despise what he did. It was brutal. Alcohol. I know he was on Valiums. Uh, it stated he was a heavy drinker. He had a whole string of issues. And I think today it's even worse. Uh, I think a lot of these are, things are going unnoticed. Uh, we don't have the proper facilities anymore to treat people who may have an issue that would drive somebody to do that. Because if you kill somebody, if you ask me, you are not in your right mind. There is something wrong with you. If you did it, other any reason, any other reason than self-defense, there is something wrong with you. And what he did was just gruesome. And I don't believe the death penalty um, for the family that went through that. The death penalty is too good for a person that that murders people. That's my belief. I think you let them rot in prison. Then there's the argument. Well, why should taxpayers support somebody on death row or in prison for the rest of their life? Well, I guarantee you that would be a worse punishment than the death penalty. Yet our country can send billions of dollars to foreign countries to support wars we have no business in. Yet we can't take care of our own. So that is why I did this video because we, we don't have many excuses anymore. I mean, the money was there at the time. There had to have been programs he could have got into. Whatever happened, um, it was too late. So Jack spends the next 12 years on death row. I believe his appeals went all the way to the Supreme Court. If you Google his name, Jack Dale Walker, you can get the details of everything that happened. Uh, if you want to talk about wasting taxpayers' money, it's all these court cases. Uh, sitting 15, 20 years on death row. Now, Oklahoma, they don't play around. Uh, they'll, I believe the year they executed uh, Jack Walker, they probably executed 15 others, and I believe right now they're going through, they're going to uh, do the same thing. But yes, I knew him. He was an associate, uh, what do you call it, an acquaintance from school. We did not hang out. Uh, but if you ever went to a school that had a decent amount of students, there's going to be two, three, four, five of them that are probably going to end up in prison. And you may have a Jack Walker in your class. So you need to teach your children properly. That is the entire problem today. Kids are not being raised right. They're not being taught the right things. Maybe the parents didn't know how to raise them because they weren't raised right. But you know if you have good kids or not. Now, I was no angel in school, 
but I never did anything to that degree. You know, my, my troubles in school were because I was a class clown, pretty much that. Uh, you know, I did the normal teenage things, but I had never in my life have even thought of harming another person that wasn't in self-defense. So, it could be any one of us. We don't know. You know. We don't ask to be born. We don't have a choice in who we are born to. So keep that in mind. Should we have the death penalty? Should we not? I don't think we'll really ever know the answer to that. In the old days, you were executed immediately. They found him on the scene. He admitted his guilt. Why go through the whole process? Our justice system has just gotten ridiculous. Uh, there's no way to... I don't think there's any fixing it at this point. You know? But anyway, I thank you guys for watching the video. I didn't go too deep into details with the case. It's kind of a gruesome thing. Uh, but... I'm not defending anything he did. I have no way. But I just wanted to have somebody that knew him as a child to be able to say that yes I recognized even as a child that there were issues with this man and he was executed uh, on December, August 28th of 2001 and uh, I will put up his last words and how that went down after this I thank you for watching there you go.